So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, usual um, guru supply for our interim meeting. Um, and also, we already have the um, agenda. Let me share. So um, we'll have an update from Ben first. I'm wondering if Ben is is here. I don't see him. Um, so maybe we can start to see. Um, so um, please uh, register your name to the the etherpad. So all the codim. Um, and um, we are also willing to have some volunteers for the minute takers. Any volunteer? I guess see, see them can can do the first one hour of note taking. Okay, good. Thank you, see them. Thank you. No worries. So please go ahead, um, Logan. So uh, we have the first. I believe we have a presentation for the first draft, which is um, Ace Co-op Transport. Uh, Mohit, are you ready? Yes, uh, I'm ready. Uh, so, uh, so if you can share the slides, please. Yes. Yeah. So, so the current status is uh, I I got some comments from the from the working group and uh, mostly uh, the comments are around. Uh, uh, so, so, so I think in uh, uh, in uh, so there is one more version of CMP protocol in progress, uh, which I think started after I uh, I I submitted my draft. So, uh, I have to. Uh, Look at that and uh, make sure I'm not missing anything in the CMP v3, which is a work in progress. And then there were some comments around uh, around the versioning that I should not use a particular version and it should be generic. So I'm making those changes in the draft and removing the support for version one, which I believe is obsolete now. And then there were some comments around service discovery and. Uh, uh, I think in the last uh, working group meeting, we had a comment around uh, the DTLS to TLS proxy. So, so that uh, is one more section where I will add more clarification. 
so 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 i i am uh, working on it so i was supposed to uh, submit the draft uh, the next version of the draft before before this interim uh, but uh, due to some other reasons i could not finish it so i'm hoping i will uh, submit it by uh, in one week from now and that draft should uh, should cover all the comments that i got So, so uh, please go ahead, Daniel. So, so basically, um, well, my understanding is that um, this draft is uh, almost ready for working group last call. Uh, yes, uh, yes. That's the right. next version. Um, so I'm wondering if there are any people attending this meeting that have uh, read the draft or that think uh, the draft is um, ready for working group last call or. Uh, that think the draft is not ready for working group last call. And um, it would be good to have your feedback. Um, I think uh, our current plan is to uh, start the working group last call as soon as we got the new version. Anyone in favor or um, against or no opinion? I mean, it, it's good to you state your mind, um, I would say now. Hearing none, I think we can go to the next um, agenda topic. So the next one is uh, co-op VAP. So Rafa or Dan, are you ready? Dan? Yeah, I think you opened my slides again. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan, are you ready to start? Dan? Uh, we can't hear you, Dan. Uh, at least on my side, I can't hear you. I think Dan, you are on mute. Dan, please unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. Where do we start? So uh, the idea is uh, we, we had some, some feedback uh, from uh, Christian Ansus about uh, the use of uh, the uh, new option we defined for uh, keeping the ordering warranty that we need uh, for uh, a an IP uh, lower layer. If you can please uh, go to the next slide. So here, uh, this is uh, like uh, we are reviewing the the requirements for an IP lower layer, and we are stopping in the ordering warranty uh, one that has IP. And uh, the way that we are currently uh, uh, keeping this this uh, requirement is that we define a new option called uh, signal motion where we put a, a number and this number reflects the the message that is currently ongoing and uh, allows the the sender and the receiver to uh, understand which is the the current message and the one that is going to expect next okay so so the thing is that uh, there was there were some comments regarding the the, the use of this option uh, because of uh, several things like uh, we are introducing a new option can we do it uh, can we achieve this without uh, creating any any option using one that is already existing or does co-op provide on its own uh, mechanisms to uh, help us achieve this ordering warranty. So if you can please go to the next uh, slide. 
So the idea is uh, from the uh, general uh, schema of, of COA, we have uh, relating uh, messages, we have the message ID, relating requests and responses, we have the token. And uh, for our uh, Coop service, we proposed uh, the Segnum option. So uh, the idea is, can we, since uh, there is a question that if we can do it, do this in another way, we, we were wondering, can we achieve this only with a token? If there are no uh, ongoing uh, uh, additional Coop exchanges, uh, can we even go further and use an empty token, maybe to save bytes? And uh, if uh, we are, since we are dealing with a lockstep protocol, and that is an assurance that we are not going to get uh, the next message uh, until the the current one is being uh, processed correctly, maybe we can even leverage uh, the message ID uh, if we have the, cap the capacity of influencing the co-op engine that is being used. So, uh, talking with, with Christian, if you go to the next uh, slide, please. Uh, there were like uh, three different uh, options that were proposed in, in our chat. One is uh, not using a new, uh, th this new option and instead using uh, the URI query to achieve this by using uh, an additional value after the, the value that, that uh, signals which is the bootstrapping state that is uh, generated when the, when the authentication starts. And the second value, the, the end value at the end of the, the URI, which could be used to uh, signal a, a specific step within this state. This would be sent in the, in the request uh, and, would be in, and would possibly uh, give us the possibility of keep track of the current uh, exchange. Another possibility is in the response to use the location path and location query options that would indicate which is the expected value uh, by the server. There is an issue in this case that it is specified that, that these uh, options can be used with a, a, a 2.01 uh, response code in the, in the RFC, but it is not clear if this can be used with a 2.04 change uh, response option. So our question uh, we, we sent in an email uh, to, the, to the mailing list is, can we do this with, with the location path and location query? And lastly, uh, Christian uh, proposed the use of uh, a current option that I think is close to be uh, uh, an RFC, that is the echo option. This option would allow uh, transparently to, to keep the state between two entities to synchronize them. And uh, from the first uh, acknowledgement, uh, this echo option would, would state uh, a number, we would uh, have a number that will reflect the, the current state of the, of the exchange. So uh, these are the, the, the different options, trying to find an alternative to generate this new option that we proposed in the zero zero version. The idea is, uh, what do you think? We understand that the echo option being uh, uh, something that is going to be standardized and and it's very similar to uh, what we fi uh, initially proposed with the second motion. I think it's a, a clean alternative and it, it would uh, help us achieve what we want. But maybe you see that it's interesting to go another way, maybe with a uh, query or with the location path, if we can do that, instead of using another option. So. Uh, we are at the point that we understand that the echo option is an interesting uh, alternative, but we are uh, open to suggestions and from from, from the working group. Uh, 
that, that I think uh, the last uh, slide just uh, is uh, stating what we think about the, the possible alternative and asking just asking you what do you think? So do we have anyone with a strong opinion against that or um, anyone with a strong opinion in either way? Well, <clears throat> I'm uh, a few hundred miles uh, further back on, on this whole thing. So I, I have no idea why we are inventing new options, inventing new ways of, of using message IDs and sequence numbers. Um, so my first question would be, has anyone ever looked at the problem of, of running EAP over a REST protocol, or is this a completely new thing? So uh, I think there are uh, other uh, proposals I think over HTTP. Uh -huh. I think I have to look uh, for it, but uh, yeah, I think it's not uh, the first attempt to do it over REST. Because m maybe we want to learn something from from how they solved uh, the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, this looks a lot like other uh, situations in in which. Uh, REST was, was being used to go through a, a sequence of uh, states and uh, using the, the hypermedia as the engine of application state approach, uh, really what, what would be needed here um, is a way to step the application uh, through this state uh, using a sequence of resources. Mm -hmm. So using using a way to identify a resource, and you had the URI query as one way of doing that. That's not the only way, uh, but th that certainly would be possible. Uh, that that might be um, a solution. So one one important aspect for me is um, you cannot look at a, a protocol like this in isolation. So there, there are several executions of the protocol running at the same point in time. And you need to understand how these executions um, actually uh, can be kept separate from each other. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems to me that hasn't really been looked at yet. Mm -hmm. OK. So your, your point is we should consider uh, every uh, uh, state of the state machine to be able to understand the requirements for maintaining the 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 signaling in REST to signal the, the, the current step in which we are in. Or I am am I misunderstanding you? Yeah. So so. Thinking about the state in, in sequence numbers is, is a little bit problematic for me because, uh, uh, as I said, there, there are several executions of the, the potentially several ex executions of the protocol going on at the same point in time. Um, so how, how do we keep these states separate? And we probably need a way to name these states. Yes. Yeah, so, uh... Currently, we are under, under the assumption that we are with uh, constrained devices and we are only going to have one uh, ongoing uh, authentication process at a time. Maybe that is a wrong assumption, but that's with uh, what we start. But even in this case, we are, uh, when we start the authentication process, we are uh, returning from the server uh, a, a, a resource identified, uh, uh, signaling to the to the uh, client uh, to uh, uh, to which state uh, does it have to uh, send the the next uh, authentication messages. 
Right. That, that so, sounds good to me. So the the I'm I'm looking at the draft right now and and uh, not sure I understand what's going on there. Um, so th there is uh, so, somebody who wants to authenticate and somebody who's serving as an authentication server, right? Yes, maybe uh, Logan, can you show the the, the second uh, slide of the of the presentation? There we have a uh... Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm lost in my windows. Yes. No, that's not well. Okay. That one. The, the second. The second one. So one more. Uh, a couple of more uh, slides up. One more. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Daniel. So go ahead. Maybe can you uh, uh, make a, a little bit bigger the, the, the exchange? Okay. Um. So why is the controller the controller is the authentication server? What what is it? No. The, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, here we here we have uh, three entities. The, the, the thing is that uh, the authentication server is not showing here. The authentication server is uh, a triple A server. The controller is an IP authenticator that is uh, acting as a forwarder of the messages between the IoT device and the, uh, and the IP here, that is the IoT device, and the IP server. But in this case, we are only showing the, the exchange between the IP authenticator and the uh, IP here. But we have on the, on the other side uh, a, 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 an IP server that can be a triple A server. In any case, the triple A server can be co located in the controller, so this exchange would, would be uh, the same. So the idea is uh, a device is trying to uh, enter the domain of a controller. The first message signals the controller through the, the bootstrapping service that is represented by B in this case, that it wants to start the, uh, an authentication. From that point on, the controller uh, takes the role of the client and the IoT device of the co-op uh, server. Because so why, of, why is that? Yeah, because uh, according to the Elwick uh, uh, one document of the uh, recommendations for lightweight implementations, uh, it said that uh, it was better for uh, the retransmissions to be on uh, a more capable device, and this one would be the controller. So uh, if the IoT device is the server, it won't have to uh, take care of the retransmissions. Okay. So uh, the only thing that does the client, the IoT device as IoT client, is triggering this first message to uh, indicate to the controller that it wants to start a boost, uh, an authentication process. From that point on, the controller is the, 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 the co-op client and the IoT device is the co-op server. And in, at, at the same time, uh, we have the, the other level, the IP layer, right? Where the, the IP, the controller is the IP authenticator that sends IP requests to the IP uh, peer and uh, if responses come back for from the the IoT device to the controller, which can forward it to the authentic uh, IP authenticator, uh, IP uh, the AAA server or the IP server. Sorry. So the, the the issue here is we need to be able to provide uh, order delivery. So in the in the in the first exchange that you see the IP request identity and response identity, the IoT device is creating a resource. In this case, uh, B slash X, which identifies the current bootstrapping or authentication process. So our, our question is, can, how can we achieve ordering warranty uh, with this exchange? Can we use just a token can we, uh, you, can we use um, uh, message IDs? The thing is that, uh, according to Christian, there are some co-op implementations that are not full 
co-op uh, implementations and may not keep track of uh, the last uh, message IDs that are used. So this might be a problem if we want to uh, make this uh, process available to uh, generally to all co-op engines. So that, that's where the, the question of how do we achieve this signaling of the current exchange? I don't know if, if I explain myself. Yeah, so um, the, the solution is kind of already hinted at uh, there, but, but it's kind of uh, a little bit uh, uh, hidden. Um, so when, when you do a post, mm -hmm. you essentially post to a resource and that resource has a name and that, that's uh, slash b slash five in this case, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow the controller needs to know that this resource exists. So I'm, I'm assuming that the first post uh, actually provided the name of that resource. So from the point of view of the IoT device, that would mm -hmm. be the, the instance of the, the uh, protocol, the protocol mm -hmm. run that, that we actually want to go through. So the, the controller does a post to this uh, resource. And yeah, the, the thing is that the first, the first post uh, should not have the five. It was a mistake. The, the five should be assigned by, by the IoT server in the first, in the dot zero one created, it was a typo. Yeah, but uh, how, how does the controller know mm -hmm. what it should post to? So it, it, uh, the, the, the IoT device, the, the co-op server has a bootstrapping service. It does not yet have a, a specific resource, but it has the, ser the service, the slash B, available so it should post to the slash b service and then it would generate the associated uh, resource that would be in this case x or five okay so the the, the assumption is that the iot device has a generic eap um, entity that uh, can take uh, requests from from any kind of controller out there Mm -hmm. And uh, th there's essentially not really a, a connection between the the first non-post and and the uh, second post, but the the IoT device simply sits there, and uh, if there is a controller that wants to talk to it, it offers a resource slash b, where where an EAP protocol run can be initiated. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, so from the point of view of the device it's really important to uh, separate. I mean, if, if two controllers come to the device at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, that shouldn't uh, cause the, the protocol runs to be intermingled, but there should be separate protocol runs. Or if the IoT device only can do one protocol run, then uh, the, the next attempt to start a protocol run before the, the first protocol run is over Mm -hmm. uh, would need to be denied. Yes, that's um, the, the idea for now, yes. Good. So the, the ACK would essentially tell the, the controller uh, what uh, resource the IoT device now um, actually associates with that ongoing protocol run. Mm -hmm. So a 201 created is exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, but the URI path here is a bit confusing. That, that's really the, the location. That, that okay, location path, okay. You Sorry. are talking about. Okay, so we, we now have uh, slash b slash x. And the, the controller can then send something to slash b slash x. And mm -hmm. uh, what should happen now is that the, the device creates a new resource, slash b slash y, and sends back another created and says, okay, um, I have created a resource slash b slash y to which you can post your next action. Mm -hmm. And the, the device probably would simply be deleting slash b slash x, uh, uh, but it doesn't have to tell the controller that it did that. Mm -hmm. So then you have slash b slash y, 
and then the controller can send to slash b slash y and uh, then again you do a 201 created for okay. slash b slash z uh, and so on so the, oh. the sequence number would essentially live in the location path in in the responses mm -hmm. and the uh, ui path in the requests okay okay so uh, in this case, it, it, I think it would work because, as you say, we are only maintaining one bootstrapping state ongoing. If we wanted to complicate things, we may want to use uh, a sub uh, part within the resource, like uh, five slash one, two, three. Well, it's totally the, the um, decision of the server how it wants to name resources. Uh -huh. So if you want to call them slash b slash five slash one, that's fine. If you want to call them Alice and Bob, that, that's also fine. Okay. So the, the, the device tells the controller what the name of the next resource is. And you don't have to standardize that. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. That would simplify much more than we expected in the process. Just using the, the the resource and the jury uh, the location path okay so I think it's much, much clearer now how how can we achieve this without using any additional uh, options um, and I, just just one question could could we use changed instead of created not really because you, you are creating a new resource for for this uh, step of the, the protocol okay so uh, daniel can can you possibly mute because we are hearing some some background noise from you oh some background noise okay so the the um the the slash b slash x and the slash b slash y uh, and so on or the b51 b52 however the sir wants to call them uh -huh. these are new resources and these resources go away after that that uh, uh, protocol run is completed so 201 created is actually exactly the right uh, response okay thank you okay okay so even even if if inside the 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 server we are sharing or creating a, a bootstrapping state that is the the state machine of the IP uh, of the IP state machine, and that IP state machine is the same. Uh, towards co-op, we can be just creating new uh, resources. There is no problem there. Okay, perfect. Right. Great. Great. Thank you very much. I this is Rafa. I raised my hand, <laughs> but I don't know if I. Hi, Rafa. Hi. Oh, please, please go. Just, uh, I have a comment uh, about this because uh, if I, I may, I talk. Yes, we can hear you, Rafa. Please go. Okay, okay. Uh, the my question is. To me, I understand that solves uh, somehow the problem of the sequence number, uh, of the addition of the sequence number. But uh, in my mind, it's a still bit confusing that you have a new resource per each it packet. So all these it packets you can see in the figures are completely related. So that's why we use the same, uh, let's say, resource. Somehow saying, all that state, all that conversation is kept by that state. So if we're changing the state, and it's a, you know, I don't know if it's a completely under a design point of view, to me, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, you know what I mean is you're changing the resource that that resort is only processing a couple of messages. So meaning one request and one response, but somehow those messages are related with the next and the previous IP messages, all those <laughs> uh, resources. And I don't know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a, a doubt I have. I know I understand it solved the problem of the sequence number, so it's related in the sense, okay, so the next resource you're going to use, 
I mean, the, the IoT device says to the controller, uh, the next uh, uh, resource you are going to use is this one. But internally, the, the, the service, uh, the uh, slash B service, is relating all these resources that to me are di like different states. <laughs> So I don't know, and we have only one EP state machine running. So you know what I mean? It's it's a to me it's a, a little bit confusing. <laughs> well, it requires uh, stopping to think in terms of of sequence numbers and and starting to think of application uh, states. Uh, but the the point is when 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 the controller does a specific post. Then, from the the point of view of the device, which is the server here in in this picture, uh, that destroys an old state and creates a new state. So th that's exactly what what is being modeled by by uh, doing a two or one uh, created. So after you have done a post to to step four, then you are not supposed to do another post to step four. You are supposed to do a post to step five. So it, it's not not uh, as uh, confusing. I mean, if if you think about how how you actually buy things on Amazon, you also step through a number of of URIs uh, in in the process, and uh, the, the URIs encode where you are. Are, are you still assembling your your uh, shopping cart, or, or actually, are you actually paying now, and so on? These steps are all encoded in the URI of, of the next request coming from the browser to, to Amazon. Mm -hmm. In my mind, in my mind, what, what, uh, at the, uh, in the first step, what we had in mind was that uh, uh, all the conversation will be kept in one resource in the, I, uh, the server, in the co-op server, in the IoT device. And then taking into account that resource, you will receive several posts to that resource. Yeah, that's and the way it worked. And, and sorry, can sorry. you repeat, Karsten? Sorry. Th that's the way SOAP worked. <laughs> yeah. And we, we kind of uh, have have gone beyond that a little bit. So we now have resources that actually de describe what particular um, application state transition we actually want to affect by, by doing an action. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I think obviously creating a new resource solves the problem. As long as the, I, the, IoT, the implementation of this service is relating all these resources uh, uh, or link these resources somehow internally. I mean, unfortunately, I have to run to to the door for a moment. I'm sorry about that. You know what I mean? Is we we need to we need to relate all because in case we receive like an old message for that resource, we need to uh, either retransmit their knowledge or just discard the message because we are receiving like an old one. Uh, so th that kind of things needs to be done based on that resource. I mean, if I'm in the resource number five, it means if I receive again a post for the number five, I should retransmit the knowledge for that resource. Or if I should receive uh, a resort, a previous resource, then I should uh, 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 yeah. forget that because that's a duplicate message. So all uh, everything needs to be implemented somehow, I guess, in the application uh, uh, part of the of this slash B, right? Rafa, I mean, we um, need to get track of all uh, of the, of this sequence. <laughs> Rafa, uh, Dan, and Kosten, um for the interest of time, uh, okay, I would invite you to continue the discussion on the mailing list. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, and then we'll proceed to the next presentation. Uh, Sigdem, are you ready? 
I didn't them. know I have a presentation uh, ready for typing. You mean? <laughs> oh, I mean, um, your your draft is uh, next. Um, sorry, uh, PubSec profile. Pops up. Uh, yeah, we haven't we, we haven't presented a present. I think we haven't put a presentation, but I can give you an update since the IETF mm. meeting. Please do. Okay, so since the IETF meeting, actually, um, I've uh, collaborated with Francesca and we've uh, agreed to um, put the changes regarding the MQTT part into the draft and that's been uh, worked in the GitHub repository. The next step of implementing the change based on the um, architecture uh, change I proposed, that's in progress. And once that's finished, uh, we will submit a new version. Uh, however, we haven't fully gone over the entire draft to implement that uh, architecture change, which affects both the co-op and the MQTT uh, sections. Um, one thing that I have also done, there was a question regarding how MQTT application which manages um, the um, groups in terms of topics which can also have wildcards can be implemented um, uh, and how the group security for them could be supported and for that um, I've read the group com document that Mirko had suggested um, and the co-op uh, uh, how the core solves this problem in co-op um, and uh, there are um, the idea of having uh, security groups versus application groups we will adapt the same terminology in mqtt uh, description of the uh, pops up document as well and uh, there are kind of interesting uh, overlaps there um, and uh, but uh, the general ideas can be used to describe the mqtt part as well and I've also confirmed that what the group com document means when they do refer to a group was is a security group, not an application group. And having that clarification, we have now a clear path how to support MQTT topics, as security groups, um, and how to um, discover the mappings between the application and security groups. So these are the two updates. In summary, short, <laughs> short story, um, we have a clear path how to implement and there will, they will be in the next version. Thank you very much, uh, Sigdem. Um, and that may be, be uh, Marco, we have your presentation next. Are Hi, you ready? correct. Uh, please, uh, Dania, can you share um, the slides for Marco, please? Right, thank you. Um, these are a few updates since the ITF 110 meetings. I basically took the action points I uh, collected at the meeting um, and we are building for the next version. Next slide, please. Right, the updates I worked on are already uh, captured in the editor's copy on the GitHub branch uh, 11. And if you remember, it was mostly about two things that were discussed and I understood agreed already um, during the past meeting. And they were essentially about aligning uh, this document with some uh, related details that uh, happened already in the Grupo Score document um, in core. Uh, in short, but then I'll go through that a bit more. Um, making this group manager consistent with the fact that now group identifiers can be recycled and uh, killing some redundancies here and there that we had in some parameters where we were repeating uh, two times the uh, capabilities of the cozy key types, basically. And the goal was to stay that uh, once only. Uh, so on the first point, as I said, now it is possible in Group of Score already to have reusage of group identifiers once the group manager just exhausts all, all the possible values. And uh, it is now possible safely uh, to recycle previously um, assigned values. Uh, 
the the high level of all this is already defined in the group of score document, but that requires some more detailed mechanics about the group manager uh, in this particular document, of course. Um, so like before, when joining the group, uh, the new member gets the group ID that it has to consider from then on uh, in the group that can change over time because of, of a group ranking. But now additionally, the group manager stores as associated to that new group member um, exactly that group identifier that assigns to that group member upon joining. And let's call it the, the birth GID um, of that member. And that's retained uh, at the group manager as long as that uh, member is in the group. Then the idea is that at some point, the group manager uh, will have some reasons for uh, for rekeying the group. And we know that when that happens, uh, it changes group identifiers. Say it wants to assign a new group identifier, GID star. Well, uh, rather than proceeding right away, right away, the group manager will also check uh, in case any current group member uh, has as its birth GID, uh, the GID star that is going to be assigned in the group. And if that's the case, uh, those particular group members that are there since forever for experiencing a whole rope around of group IDs, well, they, they are evicted from the group as well. Uh, I'm omitting some details here that are documented in the group of score draft, but th that's the, the, the whole point for making the recycling of group IDs secure. Uh, so in short, uh, there's this additional mechanics at the group manager for storing this birth GIDs of current members and possibly evicting a bit more members um, before um, actually wrecking the group to enable this ID recycling. Uh, that was one point, and it's all in the editor's copy already. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, this looks more complicated, but it's actually simpler. And it was about uh, eliminating the redundancy I mentioned before. Um, so I discussed also in the previous meeting, uh, this affects three uh, parameters uh, that appear in uh, two different spots uh, during the workflow. Uh, the first spot is the response from the OZ info endpoint. Uh, of the group manager, um, where both sign info entry defined in ASCII group com already, and ACDH info entry defined in this document instead uh, are returned. And in the old content column, you, you can see that uh, it used to be that way. The, the capability uh, of the key type for COSI were present in both parameters, essentially. Uh, so more bytes on the wire and just a slightly more complicated parsing. Um, so what I, what I did was just removing the uh, capabilities of the key type from, from the first parameter so that it's present uh, anyway uh, in the second one. And it, it's really about the same thing for both uh, sign info entry and ECDH uh, info entry. Uh, the third parameter uh, key that belongs instead to the actual joining exchange, especially in, it's in the joining response and the exact content and format inside key uh, are defined in this particular document. And here we had that redundancy as well. What I did was actually uh, killing altogether uh, CS key params, because uh, we had already CS params specifying both information we need. And that simplifies also the implementation a bit because uh, the joining node gets the join response, considers CS params as is, and it is ready to be taken and put into the uh, security context uh, generated for group of scores. So it's also very aligned with the format of uh, the security context structure one has. Um, I already implemented this change, these changes in my code base and tested that. So. Uh, it works fine. Um, so this is all about addressing the action points from the meeting. But while working on, on this particular point, uh, I noticed one thing that ended up generating a, a possible open point for um, keygroup.com, actually. Um, this as is, uh, before or after the change, it is fine anyway uh, for the um, algorithms existing today. Uh, that have only one COSI capability, uh, the key type. 
so we thought of this before in the group of score document in core uh, and, and started to think uh, for the future in case new algorithms can be added with uh, more uh, and or different capabilities. And these structures uh, as they are wouldn't, wouldn't fit anymore. Um, next slide, please. So I considered exactly what we did in the in the group of score document where we added an appendix uh, defining a more general template for the structure of those parameter that um, is, is retro compatible. So it's not going to break the past, but uh, on the other end is also a uh, future proof and can sem uh, seamlessly adapt for uh, new algorithms to come. And of course, if you take those templates and you consider them with any of the algorithms today, you, you end up exactly with the structures we have already in the document bodies. Uh, following exactly the same principle, uh, I added equivalent uh, appendices here in this document defining this generalized uh, format for those parameters uh, following the same principle. So. Um, you, you use them today with the algorithms you have today, and you produce the structures we have now in the document body here in Kigru Como score. Uh, but they, they are future proof for possible new algorithms. Um, that's also in the editor's copy. Once done that, uh, I did a sanity check, and it was all fine for um, the key parameter and the ECDH info entry parameter. We have a large degree of freedom about that because they have been defined in, in this document, of course. Uh, but it's a bit different when it comes to um, sign info entry, uh, because I thought of the appendix for the sake of this document, but sign info entry is already defined in this key group column, actually. And that generated a, a, an open point, which is on the next slide. Uh, so to give us a better visual representation of this, what you have on the left is uh, the structure for sign info entry, uh, the find in ASCII group com that we are using as is in ASCII group com score with today's algorithms. Uh, the way this becomes according to the generalized model in the appendix um, is that sign parameters may specify a, a number n of uh, capabilities for the algorithm. And then after that, you have a number n of following parameters, um, each uh, to contain the capabilities of the uh, capability in the previous array. Uh, so uh, the, the way things are now are a bit unstable, I think, and need to be fixed exactly because uh, sign info entry is defining Kigrucom. Uh, so I came up with two possible ways to fix this. Um, if we want to maintain this generalization at all. Um, it's about adding uh, something in ASCII group comment. The first option can be uh, keeping the definition of sign info entry as is, uh, but admitting for possible profiles to, uh, to define uh, essentially deviations as long as they are uh, complete and self-contained. Uh, but an alternative option instead would be to move from Kigrucomo score to Kigrucomo already, uh, the part of the appendix that, that I added um, exactly related to uh, sign info entry. And this is possibly more cleaner uh, and easier to understand than, than risking to create gray areas with option one instead. Uh, so now, of course, I'm interested to get some feedback on this. So uh, as a reminder, uh, we would welcome more reviews on this uh, draft. And this point is possibly not urgent, but I can definitely take it as part of uh, possible working group Pascal comments, of course. I just prefer to raise it today already. So given that we don't have so many people attending that meeting, uh, I, I am, well, I, I think it's good you, you mentioned that point um, 
uh, during this meeting. Um, but um, I have the impression that um, we will mostly have some feedbacks on the mailing list um, due to the low attendance um, of the meeting. So um, do you plan to, I mean, I, I think you can update or raise that discussion on the mailing list to see um, how people get concerned about that and to um, pass the message that we need some um, additional review of the document. Uh, to possibly simplify the discussion, do you want me to raise the point as is today or to first implement, say, option two, to have something concrete to look at? If you're, uh, I, I would go for the concrete one. Mm. Um, but if you want to double check and you're unsure, you may just say, this is what I'm planning to do. Okay. If anyone has anything to say, say it now. That's, um, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I have the impression it's always, um, better to say, this is what I, I mean, this is the problem we, we, we had, this is how we intend to solve it and, uh, see if anyone raised, um, any concern. Um, may I ask a question here? Yeah, sure. Uh, Marco, is the concern uh, for the option two um, uh, is to break the ACE key group com and uh, um, and are there any other uh, do documents or implementations that rely on it now that that break uh, would be uh, significantly uh, problematic? Uh, neither option one uh, nor option two would break uh, Kigrocom. Is that if we care about this future proof um, opening, uh, something has to be said already in Kigrocom. Nothing changes for the present and for current implementations uh, anyway. Uh, I think option two is preferable because it doesn't open for gray areas like option one. And what it requires in the document body would be just a forward pointer to the appendix, and that's it. So I personally prefer option two, but, but both are safe and don't change uh, KickerCon fundamentally, especially with present implementations of profiles. <laughs> But I'll bring it to the list, Daniel. Thanks. And I can point to the slides anyway for, for more details already. So uh, if there are any more issues, I believe that we are at the end of this uh, interim meeting. Thank you all for taking your time come and present your work and we'll continue the discussion on the mailing list and we'll meet at the next interim meeting thank you thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye.